Good afternoon. I would like to call the May 20, 2018 City of Columbia Planning Commission meeting. We'd like to welcome all Planning Commissioner, Commission members, staff, and guests today. I would like that everyone turn their cell phones and PDAs to the silent or vibrate mode. This is the light changing, right? That's <laughs> not me. Okay. The administrator will now proceed with the roll call. Mr. Tupper? Here. Ms. Hartz? Here. Uh, Mr. Taylor? Here. Mr. Cohn? Here. Mr. Stigemeyer? Here. Ms. James? And Mr. <clears throat> Waits? Here. We have quorum. Thank you. A brief review of the meeting format for all of you who have not attended before. Applicants with requests before the Planning Commission are allotted a presentation time of 10 minutes. This time should include, but is not limited to, an overview of the project case history and any pertinent meetings held regarding the request. This time also includes all persons representing, presenting information on behalf of the applicants, such as attorneys, engineers, and architects. This time limit does not include any questions asked by the Planning Commission or staff regarding requests. Members of the general public are given the opportunity to address their concerns in intervals of two minutes. The administrator has a timer and will make presenters aware of when their time has expired. The Planning Commission reserves the right to amend these procedures on a case-by-case -case basis. The consent agenda. The Planning, consen Planning Commission uses the consent agenda to approve non-controversial or routine matters by a single motion or vote. Examples of such items include approval of site plans, annexations, and street names. If a member of the Planning Commission or the general public would like to discuss an item on the consent agenda, then that item is removed from the consent agenda and considered during the regular meeting. The Planning Commission then approves the remaining consent agenda items. The administrator will now read the consent agenda. <clears throat> this evening, your consent agenda consists of the approval of the April 9th, 2018 minutes, as well as two ma uh, minor amendments to a plan unit development. Those two consist of number two on your agenda, which is a zoning map amendment for 42 Catherine Park uh, Court, um, as well as all the other um, addresses on Catherine uh, Park Court listed on your agenda. And this is a minor amendment to a PUD that essentially is allowing for um, one of the properties to have a, a porch added to the back of their property. Um, item number three uh, is also the zoning map amendment for 325 Taylor Street. It is also a PUD um, in Canal Side, and it's an amendment of um, all of those addresses and parcel numbers. Um, and this minor amendment allows for an entry sign to be located within that particular, particular um, PUD. As well as um, item number four, which is a zoning map amendment uh, for 145 Club Ridge Road. Uh, this is in the Wood Creek subdivision, and this is on a, uh, an amendment to the PUD, which is basically an adjustment of a lot line uh, for that particular PUD. Your consent agenda also consists of zoning map amendments for 939 West Confederate Avenue. This is to rezone the parcel from a planned unit development to a RS3 um, single family zoning district, as well as a zoning map and text amendment for 1633 Main Street and 1635 Main Street, this is to rezone the parcel to basically add um, a DP overlay. So this is a, it would be a landmark uh, group three structure um, on Main Street. Um, item number seven, which is also a zoning map and text amendment, which is 1637 Main Street. Um, this is identical to the one above, which is to um, add the DP uh, zoning district to this particular parcel um, and designated a group three uh, landmark. And then on your consent agenda, uh, wrapping that up, we have two more items, which are site plans. One is for a 45-acre um, site plan uh, at the corner of Shady Oaks Road and Jacobs Mill Road. And item number nine, which is a 141-acre um, subdivision for site plan review at 2031 County Line Trail, consisting of 80, uh, an 80-lot 80 single-family residential subdivision. That your consent agenda. Thank you. 
Are there any commission members or guests today who wish to have items on the consent agenda removed and placed on the regular <clears throat> agenda? Yes, sir. Well, you, you have to please come forward, state your name. My name, my name is Ethan Magnuson. Uh, I'm a member of the general public, and I had a couple questions about the site plan reviews. What, what number are you specifically talking about? Um, both eight and nine. Um, my question was about the need for more single family well, residential subdivisions. I, I think what we need to do, if I'm not mistaken, is probably take this off the consent agenda and put it on the regular agenda, and then we'll call you at that I point. just wanted to make sure first that uh, my concerns were appropriate for this, this to be voiced at this time. So it's just a site plan, so the zoning allows for that development there? Right. So I guess if you wanted to take those two off consent, you could, or, um, or you could leave it on consent. But to continue the conversation, you should probably take, take one or both of them off the consent agenda, approve your consent agenda, and then address and then items move. eight and nine. That's what we're My asking. concerns are more about the zoning, so I think it probably wouldn't be as appropriate here, since, it's, since it seems like this is just about the site plan itself. Rather than the zoning. St staff can answer questions afterwards too if they're okay. technical in nature. So you want to remove it from the consent agenda? It's up to you. No, I was saying that it, it, my concerns were more related to the zoning of those areas rather than to the site plans themselves. Okay. In that case, like, it's, it's fine. All right, thank you. Yeah, I just wanted to ask. Okay. <clears throat> All right, any, anyone else have, uh, if there are no other Concerns on the consent agenda. Can I get a motion to please approve the consent agenda? Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion that we approve the consent agenda as presented. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> consent agenda is approved. We'll now proceed with the regular agenda. The first item on your regular agenda this evening is a minor uh, amendment to a plan unit development. This is for 3118 Rosewood Drive. It's a PUD consisting of 100 Rio Rose Circle 102, Rio Rose Circle 104, uh, 106, 108, 110, and 112 Rio uh, Rose Circle. Uh, it is a minor amendment to a plan uh, unit development district. And essentially, this uh, PUD is fairly specific, including elevations and floor plans and the developer um, wants to change those specific floor plans and elevations, therefore the uh, minor amendment to the pot is required. Uh, they are here and have a presentation, so um, if you wanna hear from them and then maybe ask questions. That'd be fine, would the applicant come forward? Hey everybody, my name's Eddie Yandel. I actually purchased the property maybe five or six months ago. It was a PUD that was done back in 2009, and we're essentially not, essentially not doing anything other than changing the elevations of the build. There's a seven-unit building that's already there now. Um, it's actually all uh, rental property, essentially student housing or what have you. We're bringing on single-family affordable housing for Rosewood District, um, going for a different angle than what they did originally. Um, to be blunt, what the guy built there before, just is there, there's a reason it didn't work. You can't sell, he tried to sell $500,000 houses in a two fifty dollars to $350,000 sector, and then he had to turn them into rental properties. So essentially what I'm doing is taking the you know the exact same number of units, the exact same virtually square footage were within 50 feet of the square feet of it. They got a one car garage just like the other ones had. We just brought about a more uh, economical build than what he did before. He essentially built something you build in New York City, is the best way to put it from an aesthetic standpoint and a build, build, build of cost standpoint. So it's, really, it's really that simple. We're not changing anything other than the, it's, a, it's still gonna be all brick, just like what's down there now. It's gonna be three bedrooms, three baths, just like what's down there now. It's got a one car garage, just what's down there now. We're just changing the, the, the look of the building. Any questions for the applicant? 
I mean, we can if you'd like to. I'd like to see. It's just a conceptual of what we have. But, um, you know, the, the, the particular PUD they turned in was very specific in the elevations and floor plan were turned in with them, which is kind of odd, actually. But, and then you normally just go for square footages and John, what you're bedrooms and bathrooms. My question is for you, John. I'm just curious. I mean, it's obviously a very reasonable request. Why did this make it on the regular agenda, not on the consent agenda? Is there a reason that it didn't make it on the consent? Um, when the original PUD was done a number of years ago, um, there was um, a lot of conversation within the community. Um, usually, any kind of rezoning that happens along Rosewood Drive typically brings out mm -hmm. people from yep. either side of the street. So, um, usually, once we have the agenda out, people and they see the signs and things. So, we left it. On the agenda okay. with anticipation that Fair there enough. might be public comment. Fair enough. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else who would like to come forward and speak about this item? Okay. I'll ask for a motion then. We have a second. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone oppose? <laughs> Motion's approved. Your next agenda on the item on the agenda is number <clears throat> 11. This is a land use map amendment for the future land use map uh, for uh, the city of Columbia. As you're aware, we're about ready to begin um, with our comprehensive plan for 2018 um, for the next 10 year cycle. And so we went through the land use plan that was adopted back in 2015, looking at um, a number of items. Each of these you see on your agenda, a number of bullet points and um, a lot, some of them um, actually never had a classification of land use. When, you, uh, when we received the data from the consultant, some very small parcels were actually missed. So. They didn't actually have an assignment, but when you looked at the map in an eight and a half, 11 by 14 kind of layout, you know, you weren't zoomed in to really see that. So there were some items like that. There was also some technical errors. And so this list consists of a number of items um, for corrections that we felt um, would clean up the map before going into the uh, comprehensive planning process. So that's sort of the gist of it. And we can walk you through all the maps if you're um, interested. Lee can tell you a real quick summary if you'd like. <laughs> this, this is basically just a clean up. It is. I mean, there are changes to the, you know, the land use plan is not, a, it, it is a policy document. It is not a regulatory document. It does influence, um, you know, decisions and things like that. Um, so, um, I mean, it is a policy document, but it's not changing someone's zoning. Um, but the, it is a tool that's used by yourselves and city council. Um, I don't, do you want to highlight a couple? Sure. I mean, a lot of these more closely align with the proposals that we're making, more closely align with what's actually on the ground or who the owner is. For example, um, this property is a, 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 just above you on Spears Creek Church, right, is a, a retirement facility. And the, the AC3 designation is a regional activity corridor. So it just didn't quite align with, with what that property was. Um, yeah, <laughs> going through them. Um, oh, this is there. Um, so this is property that the city owns that they've placed um, some, well, here's the park and then adjacent to it, there is some housing that's been placed. It just doesn't make sense for it to be employment campus. Instead, it should really be reflective of the community. So that UCR1, the urban core residential small lot. Um, next one, same thing here. This is, you know, this is a park, right? right across from the hangar that's just been developed in Rosewood. So um, this is a park space for it to be employment campus. You can see the track in the upper left that the schools use. It just makes more sense to be aligned with the neighborhood and be that urban core residential like we see a lot of our schools are zoned in those, or land use assigned in those areas. So it's, it's more reflective of the neighborhood. Um, 
this is a set of multifamily apartments. Um, so you can see actually that this is the case where one of those was missed. If you look in the um, kind of middle right there where it says proposed FLU EDMR, it's the water tower. For some reason that parcel was missed. So it did not have a future land use classification that EDMR is urban edge mixed residential. So it more adequately or appropriately aligns with the properties than the industrial zoning, which you see, or industrial land use, which you see to the upper left. So. Um, these properties were, I think, pulled in because of how they drew the polygon on the maps, but those properties are not owned by the state, so SD2 is civic and institutional. And so we just wanted to reflect that they were actually part of the, the corridor instead of the civic institutional, they're not standalone properties. This is kind of a grouping of properties. We've noticed that some of the properties that are owned by SCNG and by the city along the river there were um, identified as urban edge mixed residential. So we're providing, um, proposing transportation and utilities and then SD4 where the zoo is in place down there at the bottom of the page. And then up towards Bush River Road, you have um, the campus for colonial life, and so it, it makes more sense as an employment campus than it does as that activity center, um, the urban core activity center. And the SD2 that's currently there is a school, and so it makes more sense to just as apply that future land use classification like we've applied others. When we see that SD2 classification, we're really thinking about larger institutions, and this is just the, the single school. Um, these as well appear to be mapping errors that were made by the consultant team and they just weren't caught at that scale like John was talking about. But those properties you can see from the aerial photo, you might have thought that they might be residential developments because they come at the end of the residential developments on the other side, but they are part of the state property there. So that's the SD2 is proposed there. Um, this is along kind of the other category of things that we're talking about where the um, We've developed some plans since the adoption of the land use plan, and so when we looked at the South Main plan that y'all have reviewed relatively recently for those USC properties, and then we looked at how we're looking at our downtown classification through Wester Bay. We had some, some changes throughout the downtown area. Um, we have talked to USC about these, so the existing future land use um, in the green there is that SD3, that's the um, central business district we're providing proposing the UCAC3, the Urban Core Activity Center, the regional, which is what a lot of the VISTA is, those other areas, but it also has a, it, it's more amenable to them in a height kind of discussion there. Um, and then the box in the blue is SD5, that's universities and colleges. Really, we're not trying to um, extend USC PAC to the west of assembly, where this is really part of the InterVista, so making that match with the rest of the InterVista, the UCAC3. So that's something that USC, um, we had that conversation and they were okay with. Um, same thing with these properties as well. These are properties that simply are not owned by the university. So um, they, you know, while they're part of that, that block area, it would be um, unnecessary to go ahead and include them in that SD5 because we'd like to see the SD5 reflected in the new zoning with that um, university and institutional district that will allow them to um, come up with a plan for that area and so that it would be unnecessary for them to plan for an area which they do not own. So, um, same thing with these as well. So again, SD3 here, making them the downtown corridor. Um, and then this is actually Lutheran Theological Seminary, which is now Lenore Rhine. Same thing here, there were some properties that were pulled in um, inadvertently, those are actually owned by single family homeowners, so we do not want them to be that SD5. Um, this one is actually part of that larger SD5 parcel, the one in the middle there, um, and it just was simply missed, and then the ones to the left and the right were owned by the college, but we're not, um, we felt like those would be encroachments into the residential neighborhood, so it was more appropriate to reflect that urban edge. Oops, sorry. Um, and then this one just um, from, a, from a standpoint, you see that UCAC1 is Urban Core Activity Center at the neighborhood level, um, but it's surrounded by Urban Edge Residential, so it's more appropriate for it to be that Urban Edge Activity Center, so just that, that match there. Um, here we 
we felt that these areas um, were really more of a spur to the urban core activity center. So these, these became the corridor, which so we talk about kind of our activity centers and then our corridors. This is really more of a corridor development along Broad River there. And this area here, um, it just didn't make sense for the Urban Edge Activity Center to come back farther into the neighborhoods at, along the backside of Leesburg Road. It, you, you just, we weren't going to see that sort of density there. So this is going to be more reflective with UDR1 of the neighborhood areas. And um, these areas, same thing, this um, regional activity center, the, they were they were assigned to urban edge multifamily. That just doesn't make sense for properties that are um, really at kind of that crossroads <coughs> that we're proposing. I think one's a gas station and one is a, a restaurant, so we're proposing that change to activity corridor. Um, and these were actually under development at the time of the land use plan, but I don't think some of the buildings were built or those buildings that were built were probably not reflected in the aerial photos. And so they had kind of split the parcels between um, Urban Edge multifamily and Urban Edge residential, which is really more of a single family district. But it's that entire area that's going to be developed in the manner you see to the right of the screen there. So um, that's, that's a development plan that's, that's been approved, and, and they'll continue on with that phasing. So we felt that was more appropriate. Um, same thing here. This, just didn't make sense for that urban edge residential, um, which is single family, to be right along the edge of I-77, especially when it's bounded by that um, multifamily development to the left there. And this one was simply missing. So um, this one, uh, you could see how it would be easy to miss in a map, but it's a small residential lot that's in the city and has been in the city, but just wasn't assigned to future land use. So the um, surrounding neighborhood um, as you zoom out, is actually urban edge residential type two, which is a larger lot residential. So this will align with that. <coughs> and that's it. Um, thank you. Sorry, they're all throughout the city. It's like you got a little tour today. <laughs> Do we have anyone, uh, any guests? Do we have any questions? Okay. If not, ask for a motion. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a motion to approve the request to amend Chapter 8.3 of the Columbia Plan 2018 future land use map to modify land use classifications for parcels throughout the city that were just listed. There's someone with a question. No. Do we have a second? Second. Any further discussion? In favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? <laughs> Motion's approved. Um, any other business? Not at this time. No. Okay. Very good. Then I'll ask for a motion to adjourn. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All, all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting's adjourned.